right. We're going to talk about section 5.5. What we're going to do is change fractions into decimals and then work with some order of operations. So we're going to talk how to get some decimals from some fractions. Let's talk about the first one. First thing, if I have a fraction, now you might be able to do this in your head. If I have a fraction like one-fourth, we need to know that we can write any fraction as a decimal. Any fraction can be written. as a decimal. The reverse, however, is not true. Any decimal cannot be written as a fraction. Some decimals never end and don't repeat. Um, so those ones are called irrational. You cannot write those as a fraction. However, every fraction is either a terminating or non-terminating but repeating decimal. So we can consequently write it as a, a, a decimal. Now, what operation do we talk about if we have one fourth, what does it mean? Is it one plus four, one minus four? What does that actually mean? Wait, a fraction means what now? A fraction means division. So notice that when we say one fourth, we're actually taking one whole and dividing it into four parts, each of which are going to be less than a whole. Are you with me that fractions mean division? Yes. Okay. The question is, if I'm going to write a fraction as a division problem, which I can do, What goes on the inside of my division symbol? Is it the one or the four? One. Which one? The, the numerator or the denominator? The numerator does. So what you need to know is that even though one is a smaller number, it's going to go on the inside of our division symbol. So the top number, our numerator, always goes on the inside of our division symbol. So one. And on the outside, we have our four. One divided by four. Now, wait a second. How are we going to divide four into four? Doesn't even go into one. What now? We could add a decimal. Sure. We know that one is the same thing as one point zero, right? Couldn't we do that? Yeah. So let's add a decimal up there. We know that one and one point zero are the same thing. So what we're doing, we're changing this numerator into a decimal number, one point zero, and then we're going to divide it like we just learned how to do. How many times does 4 go into 1? Well, no times. How many times does 4 go into 10? Twice. Now, I forgot to do something. What have I forgot to do? Okay, as soon as you put this decimal here, you put that decimal there. So it doesn't go into 1, as we're going to get a 0. 4 does go into 10 two times. We'll multiply, we'll get our 8. This should be old news. We just did this yesterday. When I subtract, how much do I get? 2. And then I'm done, right? No. Oh, okay, I can keep adding zeros after my decimal place. So bring down the zero. Four goes into 25 times. We'll multiply, get 20, subtract, and we, we stop when we reach a uh, remainder of zero. After we get that, then we're done. So the question is, can you represent one-fourth as a, as a decimal? And the answer is, of course we can. As long as we remember that one-fourth really means one divided by four, we set up our problem appropriately, and we get... 0.25 or 0 0.25. It really doesn't matter if you have that zero up front or not, as long as you have the decimal in the right spot. Let's try one more. Let's try negative 5 eighths. Negative 5 eighths. Hey, everybody, what number is going to go on the inside of my negative division, please? Five. Good. Now, do I need the negative? As long as I remember that this answer is going to be negative when I get it, that's fine. So I know that whatever I get out of here, my decimal is going to be negative. What number goes on the outside? Okay, tell me what I need to do. Put a negative sign decimal. Okay, I'm going to have a negative up there, sure, because this was negative. It means my decimal is going to be negative. Point, maybe I'll put a zero there. How many times does 8 go into 5? Into 5? I am going to have my decimal. How many times does 8 go into 50? 6. If I subtract, I get 2. Of course, I'm going to add another 0 after that decimal. Bring it down. 
Eight into 20? I subtract, I get 4. Oh, well, I'm not done yet. i got to keep adding those zeros until I end with a 0 as a remainder. How many times, folks? Five. Five. That gives us 40. If I subtract, I get 0. So we know that this decimal equivalent for this fraction is negative 0 0.625. Don't forget about that negative. Don't forget the negative. Are you ready to try a few on your own? Yeah, all right, well, I'll give you three on your own, then we'll move on. I'd like you to change two-fifths, nine-fortieths, and negative three-eighths from, from fractions into decimals. So we take our numerator that goes on the inside of our division symbol, we divide by our denominator. Of course, we're going to need a decimal and some zeros on that thing. And we work it until we get a remainder of zero. Okay, so let's see what happens up here. So, of course, when we set up each of these problems, we've got to make sure we set it up correctly. It's not the big number that goes in the division symbol. It's the top number. It's the numerator. So here we have our 2 and we have our 5. If we put our decimal and a 0, we know that the decimal place must go up here in the quotient. We have 5 going to 2 0 times. We have 5 going to 24 times. If I subtract, I get 0. That means that I have the correct decimal equivalent, it's going to be 0 0.4. Did you all get 0 0.4? Yes? Yes. Yeah? 0 0.4. Or 0. Either one. doesn't really matter. Okay, next up. We've got 9 on the inside and 40 on the outside of our division symbol. Of course, you're going to add 9.0. 40 goes into 90. Well, I'm thinking two times. If I subtract, I get 10, but I'm not done yet. I still have to add another 0. Bring that down. 40 goes into 100 how many times? Two. I subtract, I get 20. That means I need another 0. 40 goes into 20 how many times? Good. Finally, I get my 0. So this is 0.225. You can do the zero if you want to. It's not crucial. I'm going to write, I'm going to write them as the same thing, because they, they are the same thing. Now, typically in your book, you'll see a zero point something. That's just because the computer does it that way, and they want to make sure that you're not missing the decimal place. Usually people put the zero so you don't miss the decimal place. Because if I put point 0.4, maybe you don't see the point. You just think it's 4. If you have zero something, then you say, oh, yeah, there's got to be decimal there. That's why they put that. Okay, next up, negative 3 eighths. Of course, our answer is going to be negative, so we should have negative something. 
we'll put eight on the outside and three on the inside of our division symbol <coughs> with a decimal and a zero. Of course, eight doesn't go into three, so maybe I'll put a zero up there. Eight does go into 30 three times. I get 24. When I subtract, I get six. I bring down another zero. Eight goes into 60. I'm thinking seven times. Bring down one more zero. Eight goes into 40. I know that's five times. Yeah, sure. We, we did have a negative here, so the answer is negative 0 0.375. Raise your hand if you're okay translating fractions into decimals. Good deal. So we're moving right along here. So we know the idea. We put our numerator on the inside of our division symbol. We put our denominator on the outside. We make sure we got a decimal there. We add some zeros. We keep adding zeros and keep going until we end, right? Until we get a remainder of zero. So here, on, on this problem, well, we'd have our two, no problem. We'd have our three, just like last time. We put our decimal place in both spots and we put a zero. Well, let's work this one together. How many times does three go into two? Well, zero times. Six. Into 20, how many? Six. I get 18, I subtract, I get two. That means I have to add a zero. <coughs> how many times does three go into 20? It's gonna go on and on. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh. How many times do you want to keep doing this? Uh, well, is it ever going to end? No. no. Ever? No. no. As a matter of fact, when you get this repeat right here, where you see how we got the 20, then we got the 20 again, you see that? Yeah. As soon as you get that repeat of the same exact number here and here, that means you can stop because what this number is doing is repeating that same pattern. So we, we could keep going forever. If you add zeros, you're going to get, well, 6, 18, 2, 6, 18, 2, 6, 18, 2, 6, 18, 2, forever and ever and ever and ever. How you represent that with a decimal, if this pattern is going to repeat, is that line. That line says whatever digits you've highlighted, lined, are going to repeat forever and ever and ever and ever. And ever. Is it ever going to end? Point six 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 six. On your calculator, if you did it, you'd get two divided by three. You'd get point six 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 seven. Where's the seven coming from? Are you ever going to get a seven here? Rounding. They're rounding it for you. So on your calculator, it only has a finite space. This will go on for eternity. You could do this for the rest of your life and never end. Uh, but your calculator can't do that. So it'll it'll round it appropriately. Also, if they asked you to round this to the thousandth or the ten thousandth, you could do it, right? To point six 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 seven, you'd round it also. So sometimes our decimals don't actually end, but they do repeat. If they repeat, we can write that line on the top of it and say that this is equal to zero point six six with that line. That's repeating point six 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 forever. Well, let's try a couple of these on your own. Try five sixths. and two ninths. Five sixths and two ninths. Okay. 